Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, and on behalf of our staff and all the people who are helping to lead worship today, I welcome you. It is such an honor and a privilege that you are joining with us on this special day of worship. I want to encourage you, if you would, to fill out the contact form, particularly if this is your first time to worship with us as Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. There's a place there, of course, for your contact information so that we can be in touch with you, uh, connect with you, invite you to online worship and small groups and service in our community and all of those things. So please fill that out. There's also a place there for your prayer requests that go right to our pastors and to our prayer team. We love to pray with you, so please use that place on the contact form for those prayer requests so that we can be in prayer with you. Now this is the first Sunday of Lent as we begin our journey to healing and recovery uh, with our theme of holy vessels and we're going to need a couple of pieces of equipment if you'd like to have those with you uh, to fully participate in our worship today. Now for the kids during small talk you're going to want a pencil or a crayon, a piece of paper, and a piece of tape. So there's my tape. So hopefully those are simple things that you can gather up and have with you for worship today. And then everyone, if you have available to you a piece of beach glass, this would be the time to pull this out. We made these available to folks in the community with our Lenten activity kits. If you weren't able to pick up one of these uh, this past week, please let us know in the church office. We'd love to get one of these to you so that you have those materials, the reflection book, and the other activities uh, for this uh, series and this time of worship during the season of Lent. Now, when we do gather for online worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. And that means that we're going to fully participate in what it is that we're doing today. So I encourage you to turn off other devices and distractions, to light a candle if that helps you to focus, and then just really participate fully in what we're doing. Sing the songs, pray when we're praying, use the beach glass and the paper and the tape and the pencil, all the things, um, and just really fully participate. And then we covenant to be a blessing. And that means that in in every way that we are together in online worship, in the comments with those people that we may be joining with in person in worship and with the community, that all of it is a blessing in the way that we are together. Now, as we cross the threshold into our time of worship, I invite you to open your hearts, your minds, your spirits as we center with some music. Each of us is created a holy and precious vessel of embodied love. We have been through a harrowing time since last Lent that has shattered our sense of wholeness, body, mind, and spirit, like a glass vessel fractured into pieces. So we enter today a Lenten season of recovery as we focus on Jesus, the healer of our every ill.
glass begins as something whole and yet discarded. As it is tumbled by the sea, it is broken and polished until it becomes a treasured gem. We do not embrace that suffering is necessary or God-given, but that suffering is a part of life. When pain comes and brokenness enters our lives, Jesus reaches out to touch and remind us of the treasure that we all are, worthy of new life in the midst of whatever hopelessness or brokenness we may be experiencing. In a year when pandemic has wreaked havoc on our world, we begin by affirming our journey to physical health. Vessels holy and whole, broken, needing the one, open, body and soul, healer come. Good morning, Douglas Avenue family. My name is Jill Gordon. I'm on the trustee committee and I am United Methodist Women President at DAUMC. Let us prepare ourselves for our prayer of confession. Lent developed into a season of intense inward reflection and confession centuries after the life of Jesus. Yet, as we will see, Jesus encouraged people to open up about their lives, to speak truth, no matter how broken. This is the beginning of compassion for ourselves and others. It is the beginning of healing. The Latin origins of the word confess is to study and acknowledge. This will be a season to study and explore how we can be a healing presence in our community. To do this, we acknowledge our need to restore our own holy vessels. Please join with me in a spirit of prayer as I pray aloud our prayer of confession. Creator God, we are bodies fashioned by your hand in your own image with shapes and colors of diverse and immense beauty. And yet too often we have ignored the sacred nature of our physical lives. The holy vessels you have fashioned are tired and suffering ravaged by months of disrupted rhythms and ailments. Our fragility has come into full view and we are frightened. We cannot fathom the proportions of loss, so we look away, sometimes even from our own needs. Help us, healing God. Show us our strength. Forgive our inertia. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care. Please join me in a moment of silent prayer as we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. Amen.
I invite you to close your eyes if this is comfortable for you. Imagine a warm orb of light deep within you. This warm glow begins to emerge from the recesses of your inner being to fill and flood your whole body until your skin is glowing with it, radiating outward. You are surrounded by light. Feel this warmth wrap you as a blanket of assurance. Know this, God's love and grace surround you no matter what. You are a precious and holy vessel right now. Christ's light is a treasure given freely for you, for me, for all. I'd invite you to imagine the warmth that surrounds you extending to those who may be next to you in close proximity. Imagine it extending beyond your screens to those joining in online worship. Imagine it extending beyond your walls into the neighborhood, the wider community, and like the rising sun extending to the world. Let this be your peace. If you have not done so, I invite you to open your eyes. And let us now share words of peace with those around you, with those online, with me, as we are led by these very special folks in our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Linda Baston. Peace be with you. And also Peace with you. you. Hi, we're the Montgomery family. I'm Eowyn. This is Lincoln. And I'm Jacob Montgomery. Peace be, be with, with you. you. And also with you. Hi, I'm Randy Ginder, and I've been with Douglas for several years and on many committees. And peace be with you. Okay, everyone, it is time for small talk. I want to encourage all the children who are joining with us in worship to gathering close to your device, to your, de uh, to your screen, so that you can see everything that's going on. And remember, if you can, to grab that piece of paper and a pencil or a crayon, whatever you have, and some tape, because uh, Miss Laurie and Laud the Lamb are going to do some things with those. Miss Laurie is our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and Laud the Lamb is her assistant. So gather up your things and come in close for small talk. Good morning, everybody. And I am Miss Laurie. This is Laud and his assistant, Cohen. And this is our first Sunday during our season of Lent. And when we think about Lent, we think about what maybe we could give up that we enjoy for the season of Lent. I don't know about you, but I kind of feel like this whole year has been a year of giving things up that we enjoy. And it's brought on a lot of emotions in us. Um, and so I want you to get a marker lot, or pencil or crayon or whatever Lot already has his and a piece of paper. Any paper will do. And what we're gonna do, Lodge, you're gonna tell me some things in my ear that um, you've missed, okay? So we're gonna write those down on this piece of paper. So Lodge, tell me something. Ah, football. Foot. Football games. What else? Tell me. Oh, out to eat. Yeah. What else? One more thing. Oh. Well, we've had church anyway, but I, I know what you mean. In-person church. In-person church. All right, so he's written down some things that he's particularly missed, right? So what we're gonna do with those is since we've 
given these up. Let's go ahead, see if we can make you feel better. Let's, let's wad this piece of paper up. And we're gonna try to just forget about these things, right? So if I, if I wad these up, there. Have you forgotten? I guess no, no, he hasn't forgotten. All right, well, let's, let's open it up. You can open yours up too. I know, I know what we can do this time. If I, if I tear this in half, yeah, that'll, that'll, that's gonna make us forget and feel better. Hmm. La, do you feel better? Because I'm not really feeling better. No, I'm not feeling better either. Okay, well, that brings us to what we really have to do to heal. We can't just like wad things up and throw them away and pretend it just didn't happen, right? So let's let's try to let's try to spread these these pieces of paper out, right? I'm gonna get I'm gonna get some tape. I'm gonna get some tape, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tape these together. What do you think, Lod? Tape them together? I think so. So if I tape these together, okay, it's still it's still kind of messy, and we can still read it, right? It's it's messy, and we know it's there. But you know what we can do with this piece of paper? We can turn the page. We can't forget about these things, right? But we can turn our page. And we can maybe draw or say something happy, right? I know something. Here, Laud, let me see if we're thinking the same thing. Here, tell me. Uh, yeah, we're thinking the same thing. You could decorate this however you want. Something that's giving you hope that will make you feel better. We turned the page on all of this and I've written, spring is coming. Not as quick as I'd like, but it is coming. So think that turning the page on all of your hurts and making things a little bit better during this Lent. What could you do to make it better? Bye guys. Hello, I'm Frank Trumpeter. I've been at Douglas Avenue for about three years. I sing in the chancel choir and play saxophone in the praise band. Our reading from the Bible is Matthew chapter eight, verses one through four and verses 16 and 17. When Jesus had come down from the mountain, great crowds followed him and there was a leper who came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Then Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. That evening they brought him many who were possessed with demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word and cured all who were sick. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Please join us in singing, Healer of Our Every Ill.
During these next six weeks in worship, our church family is joining together on a journey of recovery called Holy Vessels. If you are familiar with more traditional or culturally appropriated expressions of the season of Lent, this may feel a little bit different for you. Lent is that 40 days of deeper worship, prayer, fasting, study, and service in preparation for Easter. Often you will hear people say, I'm going to give up fill in the blank for Lent, like chocolate or meat on Fridays or video games or social media. This has too often though become separated from the reason to do that, which is to give up or fast from something that you enjoy as a way to spend that time or money or energy in pursuing a deeper relationship with God. Fasting and all of the spiritual practices we often lift up during this season of Lent are necessary and important. From a more renewed time of prayer, commitment to weekly worship, Bible reading, giving of tithes, regular giving and service to the community. I commend all of it to you. As a church family, we are joining together in this season of renewed worship, prayer, and service by taking a journey of recovery and healing with Jesus, exploring healing stories from the Gospel of Matthew. We surely need this journey of recovery and healing. Since this time last year, last year's season of Lent, we have been through a difficult and frightening year. The COVID-19 pandemic has wreaked havoc on whatever we might have considered normal. We have seen our individual, communal, and systemic participation in racism and white supremacy laid bare. Many of us are just beginning to understand the interplay of systemic racism and access to health care, among other basic human rights, that has caused people of color to suffer and die from COVID-19 at an alarmingly higher rate. These and other experiences of the past year have shattered our sense of wholeness in body, in mind, in spirit, in our community, like a glass vessel fractured into pieces. So we are going to listen, reflect, pray, sing, and serve during this season, exploring the healing stories of Jesus that help us understand God's solidarity with human suffering, that indeed Jesus is God with us in the midst of our pain, confusion, sickness, struggle, and brokenness. We will journey toward partnering with God and the Holy Spirit to make something beautiful from that which is seemingly broken. Like the symbol of beach glass, a treasure that we will consider and use in our worship together and through the week. Our healing Bible story for today that Frank shared with us is a powerful example of Jesus' healing love and solidarity with all who are experiencing physical sickness, and particularly those pushed out of their community as a part of that experience. In this brief and powerful encounter, a man with leprosy stops Jesus, kneels before him, and seeks healing. He says to Jesus, if you choose, you can make me clean. For some context, 
Leprosy in the Bible is not identical with Hansen's disease or leprosy as we know it today. Rather, in our Bible stories, leprosy could indicate a variety of skin diseases from boils to simple eczema. Whatever this man's skin condition, we need to understand, though, his plight within the context of his community's understanding and practice, which we can learn about in the Bible book of Leviticus in chapters 13 and 14. From Leviticus 13, verses 45 through 46, we find that the person who has leprous disease shall wear torn clothes, and he shall cover his upper lip and cry out, unclean, unclean. He shall live alone. Leprosy within this context is described by biblical scholar Eugene Boring as physically and socially a living death. In the Mishnah, the rabbis compare healing from leprosy to resurrection from the dead. How amazing, how hope-filled, how full of recovery, both physical and communal, is this encounter of a man experiencing living death and Jesus, the healer and lover of each beloved, treasured person. We hear how the diseased man stops Jesus, kneels before him, and names him Lord. He says to Jesus, if you choose, you can make me clean. Jesus reaches out, touches the man, an absolutely outrageous act, breaking all the religious codes and social taboos that separated folks with leprosy away from the community. Reaching out and touching him, Jesus says, I do choose, be made clean. With a boundary-shattering healing touch and promise of wholeness, Jesus shows this man, his community, and all of us that this man with leprosy is not outside of God's kingdom, that he is not outside the love of God, that he is not outside the love of community itself, that he is family, that he is worthy of touch, that he is included and beloved and a precious treasure. Jesus then makes sure that the man will be fully integrated back into his community after this living death of leprosy. Jesus tells him to get going immediately, to neither dilly nor dally nor stop for conversation or to tell others about what has happened to him, but instead to immediately get himself to the priests at the temple so that he could be officially certified as free from leprosy to be officially recognized as clean, thus allowing him to be completely restored to family, friends, livelihood, activities, community, a healed and whole life. Now, most of us can remember a time when we felt left out or that we didn't belong or that we weren't good enough. Most of us can probably empathize and draw some connections with this man with leprosy. But as our worship series creator, Marsha McPhee, ponders, not many of us have gone through something so dramatic as to be completely socially exiled, physically healed, and reintegrated into the community that for so long feared and shunned us completely. Can you imagine then that perhaps this healed man might have had misgivings about going to see the religious leaders and temple community that had so long shunned him? That he might have been fearful to approach family and friends and faith community that had excluded him. Yet he goes. He doesn't blow off Jesus' instruction to go to the temple. He goes seeking that ultimate restoration to community and life. In this season, as we are seeking healing, how is it that we can love and follow Jesus in this kind of boundary-breaking healing and restoration of one another and our community? If we learn nothing else from our story, I hope that we understand and believe that Jesus loves and cherishes 
each and every person, that our bodies in all of their states of being are a treasure and important to God, and that being a part of life-giving healing community is integral to our health. With that said, how is it that we as individuals and as a church family can be about that same kind of healing and restoration as our Lord Jesus? How can we promote physical health, wholeness, and healing? We know that healing comes in so many ways, through medicine and access to healthy food and activity and ongoing preventative care for our bodies, these treasures, we know that we must continue to seek the health of everyone in our community at this time by continuing physical distancing, mask wearing, and participating in the equitable distribution of vaccines in our community. The care and help that we can give one another to promote health is certainly a start, but it extends to the care and systemic work we are called to do as individuals and as a church family to break down the barriers that restrict access to health care, to break down the barriers to healthy food and activity for all people in our community. In Springfield, this particularly means removing barriers and building systems that support people experiencing homelessness, addiction, or simply being black or Hispanic or queer. On this journey of recovery and healing, may we find ourselves kneeling before Jesus, asking for that very healing for ourselves and for our community. Asking for healing takes humility as we realize that we need help, as we realize that we need God, as we realize that we need each other. Asking for healing takes courage as we risk naming our brokenness and our needs, as we risk a changed future of wellness and wholeness. And asking for healing takes hope and trust as we lean into our faith that all people are treasures, beloved children of God, created for beautiful, full, blessed, and purposeful lives. Thanks be to Jesus Christ, our healer of our every ill, for the promise and hope of healing for all. Amen. Good morning. We are so excited that some of the praise band is back together to be able to play together. Please join us in singing, I Lift My Hands.
Good morning. My name is Cami Omancy, and we're thankful that you're here with us today. If you would be so kind, please join with me in prayer. And do know as we get through this prayer at the end, we will ask you to join in with us in the saying of the Lord's Prayer. Please bow your heads, open your hearts. Heavenly Father, healer of our every ill, especially our malady of separation and fear, we come to you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for the healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work amongst us, showing us the way to recovery from the toxicities and grief of our time. As demolished pieces that are treasured when found, we trust that beauty from brokenness is possible. When we speak to bind together that which is wounded, we pray especially for those who have experienced the physical loss of family and friends in this pandemic and those who are suffering from the consequences of the illness. We pray for each person who suffers in body in other ways, weariness from inactivity or weariness from overactivity in this time. We pray for those whose treatment of maladies has been put on hold and for those who suffered isolation in their illness, whatever the cause. We pray grateful thanks for the medical staff everywhere around the world who have shown unbelievable strength and stamina, and we mourn the demise to many of the caregivers who have risked their lives for our sake. We pray this day for those individuals. Heavenly Father, please be with them. And now if you would join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our trespasses, Lord, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is your kingdom and your power and your glory forever. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you. One of the important ways that we participate in our own healing and provide healing for others is through our giving. Our generous financial giving makes a difference. It heals us and it heals people and it supports these healing ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Thank you for the way that you have been providing those generous healing financial gifts and I encourage you to continue in your financial giving. You can give to Douglas Avenue online through our online giving portal and the link to that is posted right in the comment section. You can give by automatic uh, donations that come through your financial institution or to ours. So you can uh, get help with that if you need it through our church office, just let us know. And of course you can send in your checks to our church office at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. All of that giving is making a huge difference in our community right now. I want to encourage you, of course, to use that contact form if you have not done that already, to put your prayer requests there so that we can be in prayer with you and those go directly to our pastors and to our prayer team. And then we have an opportunity for some special mission giving, uh, providing a healing, wonderful, warm, comforting meal to those experiencing homelessness through our Springfield City uh, Winter Warming Shelter. Uh, we're going to be providing a meal on March 5th and again at the end of March, but we're going to be doing donations to provide that meal for March 5th, and you can give those donations right through the special drop-down giving donation um, uh, window that is in the giving link. So just check out our webpage and then let's hear about this special opportunity of mission and service and healing in our community right now from the chairs of our mission committee, Joe and Becca Johnson. Good morning, I am Becca Johnson. And I'm Joe Johnson. And we are co-chairs here of the Missions Committee at DAUMC. We hope you're all having a great morning. We are going to tell you about an opportunity for you to join us in providing a meal to our Springfield Salvation Army Winter Warming Center on March 5th. Mm -hmm. Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about the center? Okay, Becca. So the center is housed at the Salvation Army building and they typically serve 70 to 75 people. But in recent weeks, they've actually been serving upwards of 100. And at the Salvation Army Winter Warming Center, people staying there have access to a number of services, including educational assistance from Memorial Behavior Health, SIU Med Group, 
as well as Fifth Street Renaissance. So this is where we need your help. We are going to provide a meal again on March 5th and uh, we are looking to raise about $800 so that we can provide a warm meal provided by Nelson's Catering. Um, included with that is dessert and drinks. And so if you are able, please join us in doing that. You can provide your donations through the church website or send it to the church office, but we need you. So join us in doing so. And we hope you're all having a great Sunday. We love you. Take care and wear your mask. There you go. Oh. I invite you to get your beat, your piece of beach glass ready now as we continue in our ritual for healing. The words of Jesus we heard in this week's healing story were, I do choose, be made clean. Faced with a request and given the choice, Jesus chooses to say yes. And he says yes to each precious and treasured life. Recovered wholeness, healing experienced, is offered to everyone and will look different for each one. So I invite you to take up a piece of beach glass now and examine it closely, noticing the worn edges and the color, feeling the texture and the thickness. Examine it as a treasure that is completely unique which of course it is. Now shift your thinking to its rough edges. What broken edges in your own life need help? What will you do in this Lent season to focus on healing of body, mind, and spirit? Take a moment to think on this. And then when you are ready, enclose the piece of broken glass in your hand, and hold it to your heart, breathing deeply and inviting the Holy Spirit to live and move in you in a special way over the next six weeks. I invite you to keep your piece of glass close at hand this week, perhaps on your desk, on your nightstand or in your pocket where you can touch it regularly this week, remembering that you are loved. You are not alone. You are holy. You are whole. Please join us in our final hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Mm -hmm.
Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It has been such a joy and privilege to worship with you, and I pray that your experience has been meaningful, that it has touched your heart, that it is a part of beginning your journey of healing, wholeness, and recovery this Lent. I want to remind you, of course, to use that contact form uh, to put your prayer requests there that go directly to our pastors and to our prayer team. To remind you that if you would like to have one of our Lenten activity kits that has these various pieces and parts that we're using in online worship, just let us know in the church office. We can make arrangements to, for you to pick one up or uh, for us to get one to you somehow. We love you and we are so glad to be connected with you in this special season and time and in online worship in this way. It is a wonderful journey that we get to share together. Now as you go into your day, go with confidence as a treasure of God, recovering your depth of love for all and healing in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears, I choose you. And may the Spirit deliver salve to your soul and power to your living. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.